Hi, everybody, and welcome to the campus of Wofford College here in Spartanburg. I'm Jim Noble, joined by our Robert D. Atkins, Director of Athletics. That's a nice long title. I like that. Scott Call, of course, in his first year as AD here at Wofford. This is the inaugural edition of Ask the AD, and uh, I'm going to ask the AD right now. How have things gone in the, oh, well, still less than six months, Scott, since you took over here? Oh, it's just been terrific. This is such a great place, and I feel for, so fortunate to have followed three great ADs, Danny Morrison, David Wood, and Richard Johnson, of course, most recently. They've set such a great foundation, and so I'm just thrilled to be here. This is a good time to do this show. What, what an athletic weekend we're coming off of. Uh, football knocks off a nationally ranked team. Volleyball sweeps the Wofford Invitational. Men's soccer wins. Women's soccer wins. I hope I'm not leaving anybody out, but, but uh, we're on a roll here in the fall. We are, and I'm excited. And, and really, I, I kind of expected this because we've got terrific coaches <laughs> in all of those sports. And uh, having uh, been able to meet all of our student athletes, mm -hmm. I can see why. I mean, they work so hard. They're great kids, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm just so excited for them that they've had some some early success. Yeah, and it'll get better this weekend. I mean, a big, big uh, matchup for women's volleyball. Uh, Tennessee's coming to town. We'll play right here at Jerry Richardson Indoor Stadium. Another nationally ranked opponent for football in William & Mary. It's the home opener. We've got a new video board. We've got a new sound system. Uh, if you haven't been around here, come on campus. And we'll also talk about some, some changes coming out. Um, really from a fan experience standpoint, you know, there, there's a new ticketing procedure amongst others. You've got some scholarship seating, uh, a new family plan. You've, this is all kind of you and your staff have been working really hard behind the scenes to, to really enhance the experience for, for everybody coming to campus. Yeah, we, we want to have a great uh, fan experience, and there's so many elements mm -hmm. to that. You touched on some of them, and, uh, you know, I've been here just five months. There's a lot more that I would like to do. Um, <laughs> But first and foremost, you know, I want us to have a not just a winning team or teams, but a winning program. And to have a winning program, you need to have sustainability. And so just putting some things in place so that we've got uh, revenue coming in every mm -hmm. year that we can count on. And one of those uh, elements is a scholarship seating requirement tied to the seats at, at uh, or certain seats at football and uh, and basketball. And that will help, uh, uh, and that'll go towards scholarships for our student athletes. So that's uh, that's big, and uh, you know we we have increased our ticket prices a little bit, not too much. We went from 115 to 199, but still puts us in the lower third of the of the SoCon. So I appreciate our fans hanging with us on that, and uh, but they've got a great product Jeez, to come yeah. and see, you know, <laughs> two and zero, oh, and I think we've got a great team, and uh, I'm just looking forward to it. Well, we've got so many things to talk with Scott about, and we'll have more of these Ask the AD sessions as we move forward because. Uh, your vision, as we've talked about, is, is pretty comprehensive. But enough of me. The real reason you came here is to hear Scott talk to some of our great student-athletes here at Wofford. So when we come back, Amari Odom, quarterback of the football team, Mary Emily Morgan, one of the leaders on the women's volleyball team, we will learn something new about both of them, I guarantee. So when we come back, we'll have your conversation, and we'll do this again real soon. Your Wofford experience starts here. And like the generations who have come before, you choose where it takes you. What's up from Copenhagen? Experience Wofford. Hi, I'm here with Mary Emily Morgan and Amari Odom. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm good. I'm also good. You, uh, wonderful Monday evening. <laughs> terrific. Great competitive weekend this weekend. How, how are you feeling after the big wins? Uh, I feel great. Uh, body's a little sore, but, you know, the mental and physical uh, spirit of our team is up, so that's good. Yeah, we had our opening home weekend, and that went really well. I feel like everyone's ready to play our games this weekend and keep going and rolling into Tennessee as well. 
Mary Emily, you've got a big, big game against Tennessee, as you mentioned. Not a game, I guess I should say. It's a match. Yeah. Big match against, uh, against Tennessee. Uh, what do you do to get prepared for a big match like that? Um, I think our three games this weekend will help a lot. We play App State, Clemson, and Winthrop, and they're all having really good opening seasons, so I feel like that competition will be beneficial. And also, we just practice a lot, so that's good. Like, we watch a lot of film, and we look at team-specific things to Tennessee, so I think that will be really helpful for our game as well. Good. Amari, same for you. You know, two great opponents, Gardner-Webb and Richmond, both uh, – conference championship teams last year and made the playoffs. How do you think those two games prepare you for William and Mary this weekend? Uh, I think those two games really set the tone for us um, to start out the season. You know, we're coming in off a big win against Furman last year. So then playing uh, our last four wins, playing three out of the four teams um, that were in the playoffs last year and conference champions, uh, just boosted the morale of the team up. So I think going into William and Mary, our first home game of the season, uh, the fans will be uh, packed, the stadium will be packed, and the energy will be up. Terrific. Well, both of you were winners in high school, but not just in your sports that you're playing here. You and Amari, you in football, and Mary Emily, you in volleyball, but you were a two-time state champion in soccer. Am I right? Yeah. <laughs> and Amari uh, also played basketball, very competitive in basketball. Um, how did those sports help you in your current sport and your transition here to Wofford? Well, in all honesty, our soccer team was just really, really good. Like, our first starting 11, like, all committed D1. So I played more just, like, for fun with my friends. But I think it was definitely, like, helpful being on a team that also had people who were going to play high-level sports in college because, like, just the workouts and stuff that they did to stay in shape, it was just, like, nice to see other people who were like-minded as well. And then for me, uh, on the basketball court, I was a point guard, so it's kind of similar being a quarterback on the field. So um, it wasn't too much of a different transition uh, going into college, but just always being the leader of the team, being the extra coach on the field, uh, that's really just helped me uh, get this team together and build the team closer. What have you learned about leadership and what makes you such a great leader? Because I hear that from Coach Watson all the time, that you're just a, a natural leader and people um, just – your teammates just gravitate to you. I don't know how to describe it. Really, just um, I just got, as I said, I got to be the extra coach on the field. I got to know everything, what everybody's doing, uh, what the other team is doing, and then when things don't go our way, we just I just got to be the face of the team and uh, keep everybody morale up, energy up. And then when things go well for us, I can't get too excited for everybody. I got to be the level head of the group. So I mean, just doing those things, and then. Uh, just getting everybody together, you know, a whole bunch of different people, 100, 100 guys. So just getting everyone together and getting the chemistry up. That's really just my job. And Mary Emily, you're a great leader, too. Anything that you took from high school and to the transition here at, at Wofford? Um, not as much high school, but definitely the people that came before me in our own program, like our seniors last year. I think we just have such a good foundation that it was easy for like our senior class to continue that tradition. Like all of our seniors, with the exception of one, are playing at another team now for their fifth year and have become impact players. So like going off of them and getting to play with them for three years definitely helps make being a leader this year a lot easier as well. Just curious, uh, Mary Emily, why did you pick Wofford coming out of high school? I know you've been here for four years now, but you think back and has it lived up to your expectations? Yeah, it's definitely exceeded my expectations. Um, initially, I didn't want to play at Wofford because my sister went here. So she played basketball for two years here, and then she was just a regular student for her last two. But I like didn't want to go to Wofford at all. I wanted to go to a new school, my own place. And then I came to camp and was already really close with Lindsay. Like, she's the best. And I came to camp, and I just like knew after like the first day of camp, I was like, I really want to play here. So I got to commit um, to Lindsay at camp, which was really, really cool and definitely like a unique experience because I was right before COVID, too. So I got to do all my stuff before all the restrictions. So that was awesome and helpful. What do you think makes it so special? Um, I feel like the easy answer is being like the first women's team to win a championship because like no one else gets to have that experience other than the girls that were on that team. But I think also just like, our coaching staff cares so much about us as people 
and like as athletes and students and then the team itself like I think very few teams are as close as we are like I would do anything for any of my teammates and I know they'd do anything for me and I feel like that's just made four years go by so easy just like knowing that I have like friends that I'm going to be friends with forever. You're also an outstanding student. Tell us about the Pinnacle Award. Um, I didn't know I was getting it. I feel like for me, it's more just been like having volleyball puts me on a really good schedule to get my stuff done because I have such limited time to do my homework and study and I am very ADHD. So like having that schedule has been really helpful for me getting better grades. Um, and definitely I went to a really high academic high school. So that's really helpful. So I've always like been surrounded by people who cared a lot about their grades and stuff and my parents care a ton. That makes so, a difference when oh, your parents yeah. care too. They, yeah. they definitely care for sure. <laughs> Amari, what about you? Uh, why did you pick Wofford coming out of high school? Uh, so coming to, going into my senior year of high school, or my junior year playing basketball, I tore my ACL. Um, so that really kind of um, – I lost all the offers I had uh, uh, going into my senior year. And then Coach Watson, during my senior year of football, I wasn't playing, but he still recruited me. Um, and then it got down to uh, January of my senior year of 2023. It was uh, Furman and Wofford. And I, uh, I chose, well, I chose, I chose the right place um, because Coach Watson, he really, he, he talked to me, and then he really recruited me hard. Even if I wasn't playing my senior year football, he watched my junior year film, and so he really wanted me. He saw the impact I could have on this program, and that's ultimately why I chose Walford. Terrific. Now tell, tell us about your experience here so far. What, what do you enjoy about it? Um, I just like the people, how close it is. You know, it's not a big school, but I like how close everyone is. Like. Just uh, the first two weeks of school this year, um, we've had some good, some pretty good games, some good wins, and people are already congratulating us and the other people on the team. Um, just saying good game. Uh, I'm glad I saw what you guys did on the field. So that's really been the best part about uh, my experience so far. And then last year, I didn't play, but just learn, join, learn the playbook and then getting to know like people who don't play sports, getting to learn, meet everybody, uh, administration, all that, teachers. Uh, so I just like that, just meeting new people. Great. Well, you are a people person. I saw that uh, at Fan Fest. Uh, I think you had a poster, and you got all of your teammates to sign it. Or I think that was your goal. Did you yeah, get everybody to sign? I didn't get everybody. Some some teammates left, but I, I tried to get a lot of people, most of the team. Well, that, that's terrific. I know they appreciated that. Tell us a little bit, of, maybe something about yourself that nobody would know. That nobody would know... Um, I can't cook. Uh, my brother does all the cooking, but um, I'm ambidextrous, so um, writing, writing and eating and then throwing a football is the only thing I do right-handed. Everything else, basketball, baseball, kicking, um, I'm left-handed. I'm more comfortable with my left hand or left foot, I'd say, but so I'm super ambidextrous, like very weird. So, so I basketball, throw a baseball, you shoot left you know, Basketball, shoot left-handed, throw a baseball left-handed, hit left-handed, kick left-footed. So writing and eating and then throwing a football is the only thing I do right-handed. So, I mean, I guess people know that now, but if you didn't know me at first, you know now. <laughs> what do you enjoy doing outside of athletics and school? Um, I like taking pictures, like um, taking pictures of people. So I'm, 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 I'm into all this media stuff. Um, I got a camera at home. I couldn't bring it because I'm usually the one in the field or in on the court playing the game, so I can't take pictures. But in my free time, I like to take pictures of my brother at home in his high school game. So I like doing that, taking pictures. Terrific. When you think about maybe somebody that's alive or passed away that you would want to have dinner with, uh, who would that be? <laughs> Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I say. Athletic-wise, I'm going to go with, like, LeBron. LeBron, um, my favorite player was Russell Westbrook, um, but I've met him a couple of times. I know him. So I say LeBron. And then just overall, probably, like, President Obama or, like, Drake or something like that. That would be super cool. I just feel like we, have, we click off. We have a good time. Why LeBron? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, LeBron is just – he's done it in all facets of, of life, to be honest. He's a great father, great husband. And then he's poured into other kids, making building schools, and he's done on he's done everything on the court. So, and then he's like the only active billionaire in the NBA. So, if I just need some money, you might loan me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and same with Drake. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, those are those are three great ones. Uh, what about you, oh, Mary uh, Emily? <laughs> I feel like mine's more like sentimental. More like not a celebrity. I would want to get dinner with my dad's um, grandpa because obviously he passed away before I was born, but my dad speaks so highly of him. So I feel like I would always have wanted to meet him. That's, I've randomly thought about this before. So. Uh, hey, well, that, yeah. that's, that's And then that's maybe great. if I had to do like someone famous, I would do like Alex Morgan because she just retired from U.S. soccer, I think. And I was like obsessed with her when I was younger because we had the same last name. So I thought that was cool. <laughs> What, what, what is there about you or something about you that, that nobody would know? I don't think I'm fit to answer this question. I think I'm like the most open book in the entire world. But maybe that, um, I like to read. I'm a big reader. I feel like I prefer like reading and looking at like sharing books with my sister more than like TV and stuff like that. Like I feel like that's a big part of my personality. Yeah. <laughs> other other than um, reading, is there, like if you had one thing to do, uh, like a bucket list item, what would it be? Mm. Like a bucket list item? You can think about it. I'll ask Amari the same question. Do you have yours yet? You got a bucket list yeah. item? Um, I don't got a bucket list. I, too young, you'll eventually get a bucket list. Oh, I'm go. Well, this is attainable this year, but I'm going to Paris for interim, and I want to go on the, up the Eiffel Tower because I've been to Paris, but I'm terrified of heights, so I didn't go in the Eiffel Tower last time. So I want to do it this time. That was my bucket list item. Okay, you have to go now. <laughs> uh, that's a great question. I gotta think. Um, but I don't know. I'd say like. Uh, being from California, I, I've never been to the Hollywood sign, so I guess going to the Hollywood sign, maybe like on a helicopter tour or something, just getting close to it. I guess that's the first thing that comes to mind. I got that's a good that's a good question. I gotta think about that. Well, what's you, yours? You can come back. Yeah, what's yours? Oh, Bucket geez. list. Well, I've always wanted to learn how to play the piano. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I've always wanted to do that. I've flown an airplane before, but I've. I want to eventually get my uh, license. pilot's license. Okay. I've actually landed a plane mm. before um, in yep. snow. Oh, you y'all hear yeah. that? In, R in, R New, in New Hampshire, RAD can do a lot of things now. But uh, <laughs> oh gosh, I've got a, I've got a lot. Um, I would love to cage dive with great white sharks, and I wanted to do it in Mexico, uh, but they that. stopped doing that in Mexico. So. Oh, no. I don't know. I got a, I got a, I got a bunch of them. That seems That's fun. Good. Yeah. Yeah. So, Amari, what advice would you give to a prospective student athlete who's considering Wofford? Uh, just know, first and foremost, you're getting a great education. Um, you're going to be challenged in the classrooms as much as you're challenged on the field and the court uh, each and every day. Like, we talk about this throughout, like, our whole team knows the classroom is just as hard as the field. Um, but then... Athletically, you'll be close with all the athletic teams. Like, the student athletes are one big family here. Since it's such a small school, like, we all have a hard schedule. We all have a hard class schedule. We all are on the road all the time. We all live in the same dorms with each other. So um, that's what I get. And then you're also going to play uh, very good people. Our conference is a great conference, uh, very competitive. So just know those are, you're getting those three things when you come to Wofford. What about you, Mary Emily? Um, definitely the sense of community. Like, I think that it's unique to, like, all live in the same space. And, like, wherever you go on campus, like, you're seeing other students. Like, you don't really go off campus for living. I feel like that's one thing that's very different than the other places. Like, all of our seniors that have graduated said, like, the one thing they miss the most is getting to be in, like, such a tight-knit community. And then also just, like, your coaches and your support staff care, care about you so much as individuals. And, like, not a lot of other programs can say they have – coaches like Wofford, and I feel like that's really important. What's your favorite class at Wofford, or what's been your favorite class? Hmm. Do you have one? Yeah. Okay, we got it. So I've only had three semesters. You probably had yeah, about 12, <laughs> 12 semesters. But my favorite class, uh, it's only a freshman class, but my FYI class, um, that was a fun class. It's just a little 
uh, freshman information class. Um, but other than that, I liked, um, I'm in a music class right now, American Street Music. That's pretty interesting. So we're, at, we're in the 1700s right now, learning about early music, but hopefully we get to more modern stuff, which will uh, incite my interest more. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably my religions of the world class my freshman year. I have Dr. I had Dr. Clark. He doesn't teach here anymore, but it was his first semester, and he's come to every single one of our volleyball games since I had him in class. And he's like our biggest fan ever, and we love him. So that's probably my favorite class. That's terrific. So he would be your favorite professor too. Him and Dr. Fort. Dr. Fort. Yeah, he's a business professor. Okay. He's cool. Really funny. All right. What would be your ideal job when you graduate? <laughs> Um, I probably want to do something involving sports marketing, but maybe just like regular marketing for a while. I'm definitely interested in working in sports though. Can't like imagine not being involved in it. So yeah. And then for me, um, obviously I want to get to the highest level of this game play in the NFL. Uh, be a great quarterback there, but after, um, I want to get into sports marketing. What she said, I want to be a coach. My mom's a, a women's basketball, college women's basketball coach. And then just be a, uh, a GM or a general manager, I mean, an agent or some, some sort in the in league, in basketball or football, so something like that. Your parents were exceptional athletes. I think your dad played in the NFL or was yes, drafted, yes, right? Sir. Your mom played in the WNBA yes, and overseas. What did they teach you about athletics and work ethic and how to get better? Um, so my dad was always... Um, he was always my football, one of my football coaches, um, either just by volunteer, or just being, you know, so close to the game. My mom was always my basketball coach. She was a parent slash coach on the, on the sideline, recording the games and stuff. Um, but just being around the game for so long, you know, being with my mom, going to her practices, going to her games, being her biggest fan, um, just being around the games for so long, like that really just pushed me to be the leader I am and know that the IQ I have uh, now. Um, so that's really what my passion comes from. Like, they weren't, they didn't push me too hard. They wanted me to do my own thing, but just having their knowledge, their background, uh, their what they've lived through and played through, um, that really helps at home. Just seeing the game differently than where a regular sports fan would. Has your mom given you any constructive criticism so far in these first two games uh, with not your really. play? Uh, not really. She's been more of a mom wondering how my body feels taking those hits. So she's worried about more of my recovery. <laughs> but um, the first game, she was just worried about the ball security. I uh, had a couple too many fumbles, uh, but that's about it. She's, she's just happy to be a mom now. Uh, just let me live out my dream and play, play free. Now, I know you took some shots last game against Richmond. Did you, did you feel it at, at the moment, or was the adrenaline so much that you didn't feel it until after, until once the game was over? Uh, a couple of them I felt in the moment, uh, but I just shook them off like nothing big, just adrenaline, as you said, took over. But um, afterwards, I definitely felt some. I mean, just being the quarterback, like, I'm gonna, I just know I'm going to get hit. It's part of the game. Defenders want to take my face off. But uh, being a leader, I just got to uh, stay composed. Uh, can't show it. Even if I am hurt, can't show it on my face for the team. Just be that leader, be the face of the team, and just push through it, even if it hurts bad. Do you remember when I showed you the, the video of that touchdown pass mm -hmm. you threw rolling out <laughs> right that Omar shot over yeah. here? Uh, what were you thinking about in that moment? Was it just instinctual or... Uh, I mean, what, what was going on at, at that time? Um, uh, as you know, we had that big uh, fourth down conversion uh, from Bridger, Bridger to JD, who had made a great catch, and then we had to kill the clock. So um, it was a little clock thing, and then I tried to get the next play in from Coach, and I think we got mixed up on the wristband. So I kind of uh, kind of called my own play, something that'll work uh, to the team, and I just was thinking it was eight seconds left, so I tried to get something quick in case we didn't work out, but as I rolled out, I saw um, JT, he had one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker, linebacker was turned. I thought players of a plays, just make a play in the half. Uh, we were on a, we were stalling out the first half, we couldn't get much going, so we need a play going in the halftime. So I threw it up to JT, and we kind of got this little connection of uh, coming in together, so I'm glad he made a catch for us, and we went to the locker room uh, with a lot of momentum. That was a great catch, so you're you're telling me you just called your own your own play there? Uh, not really. I kind of signaled what I wanted to, but we couldn't get the play in. 
uh, with the play clock. So I kind of just, I kind of knew what I had and called the uh, play on my own a little bit, <laughs> kind of improvised. How is it to have a coach like Coach Watson, who's coached at so many mm -hmm. different programs at the highest level, and some great quarterbacks like mm -hmm. Teddy Bridgewater and mm -hmm. Joel Klatt and mm -hmm. and others. I mean, how is that having him as your your quarterback uh, coach? It's, it's it's been amazing. Like uh, as he says all the time, he's had 44 years of experience doing this thing longer than a lot of us have been alive on the team. So um, just his experience has helped me because he relates what I what we do in the quarterback room uh, back to what Joel Klatt and Teddy have done. Um, all the good things and even the bad things that they've done and how we can get better on it. So he's he's he knows so much and then he always says we have a great quarterback room. EJ, um, EJ Hanley and then Polly Sealy and then even the freshman Brady Hibbert. Uh, we have a great competitive quarterback room and Bryce during fall camp was super competitive. So just them pushing me and then Coach Watson experiments experience has just helped me excel over the top and help help me lead the team. All right, Mary Emily. What would uh, what would Lindsay say about your play? What you do well, and maybe what you need to improve on. Me? I, yeah. Oh. Um. Lindsay was the same position as me, so she's she um gives me feedback for sure. But uh, I think right now what is like key for me is just having like consistent games. Like we have a really, really spread offense, so like making sure that all of our middles are involved, our right sides are involved, but like that only comes if we pass well. So like being consistent from the serve receive line, putting in good serves, like being aggressive, and then like patience is a big thing for us this year. Like we're gonna have long rallies and long plays, but like being patient until it's our moment is like a big thing with young teams, especially in volleyball, because you can want to hit the ball straight down every single time, but like it's not really how the sport works. So. Definitely being patient. I think um, one thing she'd say I struggle with is probably uh, letting go of mistakes. I get in trouble for being frustrated, but I think I'm getting better at it. So hopefully she doesn't think I'm too hard on myself right now. What, uh, what's your favorite food? <laughs> My favorite food? Um, I like all Italian food. So probably like Vodka pasta, maybe? I think that's a good one. Have you made that? I make my teammates make it for me. I'm also not good at cooking. That's another fun fact also. <laughs> really bad at it. I set the fire alarm off like three days ago. You set the fire alarm off? Yeah, I was making uh, breakfast food and I set the fire alarm off. <laughs> I'm not what good at cooking. What about you, Amari? What's your favorite uh, food? My favorite food is burgers. Burgers and fries with some either sweet tea or cookies and cream shake. So that's my go. Everybody knows I love burgers. <laughs> and then after that would be steak. What about you? What's your, what's your favorite food? I'm with you. I would throw in Italian burgers, mm -hmm. uh, pizza. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm I'm easy. I think I Me could too. eat those three things, you know, any day. And uh, I like uh, love ice cream, mm, you know, too. or frozen yogurt. Yep. You know. Well, got, thank you. To oh, go ahead. I got one one last yeah. question uh, for you. Uh, what's uh, being new to Wofford, But what's what's your goals looking forward uh, to um, really get our athletic program to the top of the SoCon? Great question. Yeah. I mean, my goal is to provide an unmatched student athlete experience. Mm -hmm. um, I want you all to just have a terrific experience here as a student you know, and as an athlete and to win championships, mm -hmm. you know, I want to help provide the resources to be able to, to do that. You know, I think we've got terrific facilities here, mm -hmm. you know, yep. we need to tweak a few things, you know, like the weight room. I think we yeah, need to improve yeah. the weight room mm -hmm. and the football locker room. And those two things really factor into the student athlete experience, especially the weight room, because it touches all 450, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, of our, of our student athletes. Um, but uh, I think Wofford, you know, is primed for success, mm -hmm. you know, this year, and hopefully we can we can build on it. Uh, but I look forward to getting to know all of our our student athletes and find out what's important to them. Yes, so I'm I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to have both of you on uh, Thank today. You. Thank you. I appreciate it. I also appreciate it. This was fun. Yeah, this was fun. Hey, yo, two sign out. Shout out Tribe Twenty Seven. <laughs> 
Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.